Assistant Professor, Applied Science and Humanities Department, Ajay Kumar Garg Engineering College, Ghazibad. In the last lecture, I was discussing about fuels and today I am going to continue that topic and in the today's lecture, I am going to cover some of these topics, how we can calculate the calorific value. So I am going to discuss today about bomb calorimeter. By using this calorimeter, we can calculate the calorific value of solid and liquid fuels. What are its calculations? Then I am going to cover coal analysis and finally, the calculations for air requirement for the process of combustion. Now, coming first to the determination of calorific value by Bohm calorimeter. So, this instrument or this calorimeter, it is used for finding the calorific value of solid fuels. Coming to the construction of bomb calorimeter, now this bomb calorimeter, it consists of a cylindrical bomb. I will show you the diagram. Here, this is the construction of bomb calorimeter. Now, this bomb calorimeter, it consists of a cylindrical bomb which is made up of stainless steel. And this bomb calorimeter, it has a covering having three outlets, two are for the electrodes which are connected to a battery and one is the oxygen valve to maintain high pressure of oxygen during combustion. And to one of the electrodes, there is a ring attached which contain, it is a stainless steel crucible or the nickel crucible having a known weight of the sample and there are the magnesium fuse wire which contain the fuel. Now, this stainless steel bomb, it is kept inside a copper calorimeter and this copper calorimeter, it contains a known volume of water. This copper calorimeter, it also has an electrical stirrer for the uniform heating of water. And it has one thermometer that is the Backman's thermometer and this thermometer can measure up to 1 by 100th change in the temperature. And this copper calorimeter, it is protected by an air jacket and a water jacket on its outside so that there is no loss of heat due to radiation. So, coming back here. So, the bomb calorimeter, it consists of a strong cylindrical stainless steel bomb in which the combustion process is going to take place. And this bomb, it has a lid as I said, which is screwed to the body of the bomb to make a perfect gas tight seal. Now, this lid, it has two stainless steel electrodes and an oxygen outlet valve. To one of the electrodes, a small ring is attached on which a stainless steel crucible is supported. And this bomb, it is placed in the copper calorimeter surrounded by air and water jacket, as I have already discussed, to prevent the loss of heat due to radiation. And there is an electrically operated stirrer and the backpins thermometer. And this stirrer ensures the uniform distribution of heat and backpins thermometer to measure the increase in temperature. So, this is all about the construction of bomb calorimeter. Coming to the working, now what we do to the working in this crucible, we take a known weight of sample around 0.5 to 1 gram of the sample is taken and a high oxygen pressure is maintained inside this bomb around 25 to 30 atmospheres oxygen pressure is maintained. This copper calorimeter, it is filled with the no, known volume of water and outside it is covered by the air and the water jacket. Now, we complete the circuit. As soon as the circuit is completed, this fuel, it starts burning and when this fuel will burn, it is going to liberate heat energy and that heat will be utilized for raising the temperature of water 
So, before starting the experiment, we check the initial temperature of water and when the fuels burn and it transfer its heat to the water, then the final temperature of water is also noted. Now, this stirrer ensures that the heating of the water is taking place in a uniform manner and the change in temperature is noted by the Bachmann's thermometer. So, here coming to the working, a known mass of a fuel is taken in a clean crucible which is supported over a ring. A fine mercury wire touching the fuel sample, it is stretched across the electrodes and the lid is tightly screwed and it is filled with oxygen to a pressure of 25 atmospheres. Now, this bomb is lowered into the copper calorimeter containing a known mass of water. The water is stirred and the initial temperature is noted and the electrodes are connected to the 6 volt battery and the circuit is completed. Now, the sample burns and heat is liberated and the uniform stirring is continued and the maximum temperature attained it is recorded. So, coming to the calculations, now let us suppose capital X is the mass in grams of fuel which is taken inside the crucible and capital W is the mass of water which we have taken in the calorimeter and small w it is the water equivalent in grams of calorimeter, stirrer, thermometer and bomb or it, we can say it is the weight of the entire instrument that we have taken multiplied by the specific heat. If T1 is the initial temperature of water that we had taken in the calorimeter and T2 is the final temperature of water that is after heating process has been done and suppose capital L is the higher calorific value of the fuel in calories per gram. So, the heat which is going to be liberated by the fuel, it is going to be equal to the mass of the fuel that we have taken multiplied by its higher calorific value. Why higher calorific value? Because we are doing the combustion process in the closed containers. So, the calorific value that we are going to obtain is the higher calorific value and this liberated heat, it is going to be absorbed not only by the water, but it is also going to be absorbed by the apparatus. Obviously, the stainless steel bomb, the calorimeter, the stirrer and the thermometer also, they are going to absorb the heat. So, if we check, then the heat absorbed by the water, it will be equal to capital W multiplied by S, which is the specific heat of water and the rise in the temperature and the rise in temperature is given by T2 minus T1. So, heat absorbed by the water will be equal to capital W into S into T2 minus T1, whereas the heat absorbed by the apparatus will be small w multiplied by its specific heat into the rise in temperature and because the heat liberated, it is being absorbed by water and the apparatus. So, the total heat absorbed by water and apparatus, it is going to be given by capital W plus small w because specific heat of water is taken as 1. So, capital W plus small w multiplied by the rise in temperature. So, it is going to be the capital W plus small w into rise in temperature which is T2 minus T1 and the heat liberated it is going to be equal to heat absorbed by the water and the apparatus. That means, the heat liberated is given as XL which is going to be equal to capital W plus small w into T2 minus T1 or you can say that the higher calorific value of the fuel it can be calculated as HCV or the L it is equal to capital W plus small w into T2 minus T1 divided by the mass of the fuel which we have taken in the calorimeter. Now, this value is can be calculated in either calories per gram or kilocalories per kg. Now, the water equivalent of the calorimeter, it is determined by burning a fuel of known calorific value and we use the above equation. For example, I have taken here water equivalent of benzoic acid, the HCV is equal to 6325 kilocalories per 7 kg and for naphthalene this value is equal to 9688 kilocalories per kg. 
if hydrogen capital H it is given as the percentage of hydrogen in the fuel then 9 H gram per 100 it is equal to mass of water from 1 gram of fuel which is equal to 0 0.09 hydrogen in grams and heat taken by water in the form of steam it will be equal to 0 0.09 h into 587 i have already discussed it in the last lecture therefore a lower calorific value will be equal to hcv minus latent heat of water formed or the water vapor which is being formed and lcv is equal to hcv minus 0 0.09 H which is the percentage of hydrogen and fuel into 587 calories per gram or kilocalories per kg. So, by this we can calculate the lower or the net calorific value. Now, in the equation of the higher calorific value that is L is equal to capital W plus small w multiplied by T2 minus T1 by X, there are few corrections. Now, heat is not only given out by the fuel, it is also given out by certain other agents. The first correction is the fuse wire correction. When the fuel starts burning, now this liberated heat by the fuel, it is also going to include the heat given out by the ignition of the fuse wire used. So, the fuse wire again it is going to give out the heat which is added in the calorific value of the fuel. So, it has to be subtracted from the total heat liberated from the fuel. The second correction is the acid correction. Now, the fuel containing sulfur and nitrogen, they are oxidized under high pressure and temperature of ignition to sulfuric acid and nitric acid and the formation of acid we know is an exothermic process. So, the heat is also going to be liberated out if these acids are being formed during combustion. So, here you can see sulfur plus oxygen gives sulfur dioxide which in turn sulfur dioxide in presence of oxygen and moisture it gives out the sulfuric acid. Similarly, nitrogen in the presence of moisture or water plus oxygen is going to form the nitric acid. So, amount of these acids they can be analyzed from the washings. Sulfuric acid is precipitated as barium sulphate. And the correction for 1 milligram sulfur is 2.25 calories while for 1 ml of n by 10 nitric acid is 1.43 calories. So, again we have to separate the heat liberated by these acids from the calorific value of the fuel. Next is the cooling correction. Now, cooling correction is the time taken to cool the water from maximum temperature to the room temperature. So, we note down the total time taken when for the water to come down to the room temperature and from the rate of cooling of water which is dt per degree per minute and the actual time taken for cooling which is the total time in minutes the cooling correction dt into t it is added to the rise in temperature. So, here the our equation becomes HCV that is capital L is equal to capital W plus small w into T2 minus T1 and we are going to add the cooling correction because the loss of heat which was taken from the bomb calorimeter and being transferred to the water it had to pass through the bomb. So, if the bomb is heavy weighted, it is slowly going to pass heat because it is going to get heated slowly. But if it is light weighted, it will quickly pass the heat from itself to the water. So, from the cooling correction here T2 minus T1, we add on the cooling correction and we minus the acid and the fuse wire correction divided by the total mass of fuel taken that which is the X. Last correction is the cotton thread correction. Now, previously we used to use cotton thread for tying up the coal or the solid fuel. So, a cotton thread is used for the igniting the fuel 
and if it burns it also generates and if cotton thread is used in the experiment and it is given in the numerical then we have to take into account the cotton thread correction. So, our HCV then becomes capital W plus small w into T2 minus T1 plus cooling correction minus acid plus fuse wire plus cotton thread correction divided by the mass of fuel taken. So, in the numerical what all values have been given we are going to take into account only those values and the other values we can neglect from this equation and then we can calculate the higher calorific value. Now, here there is one numerical calculate the lower calorific value of the fuel which has 890 hydrogen and its HCV higher calorific value is given out to be 6500 calories per gram and the latent heat of steam is given as 580 calories per gram. So, from this equation lower calorific value is equal to higher calorific value minus mass of the hydrogen into 9 into latent heat of steam. So, the higher calorific value is given out as 6500 minus 890 into 9 into 580. On minus on doing this calculation we get lower calorific value as minus 39958 calories per gram. Here is another numerical the these are the following data which was obtained in a bomb calorimeter experiment. So, here the weight of the coal is given as 0.85, the water which was taken in the calorimeter its weight is 750 grams, water equivalent of calorimeter which is small w as 2000 grams, T2 minus T1 is given as 0.3, acid correction is given as 0 0.03 degree centigrade and if the sample contains 10 percent hydrogen we have to calculate the net and the gross calorific value. So, by using all these parameters our HCV it is going to become equal to capital W is 750 plus 2000 multiplied by 0 0.3 minus 0 0.3 which is the asset correction divided by 0 0.85 and on doing so this is our GCV and cal putting this value in the LCV equation we are going to get the LCV or the net calorific value as 441.7 calories per gram. It is LCV not HCV. This is another numerical for students to solve and these are the answers which have been given. Now, coming next to coal analysis. Coal is formed from the fossilized remains of animals and plants, hence known as fossil fuel and the action of decay, the pressure and the heat convert the vegetables and woody remains deposited many years into coal and the time required for coalification is of the order of 10 to the power 7 and 10 to the power 8 years. भैया कितनी देर हो गई तो मैं कंटिन्यू कर रही हूं बीच में काट देना ठीक है टाइम क्या हो गया ठीक है बस मैं 10 मिनट का बोल के मैं छोड़ दूंगी ठीक है ना ठीक है सो द टाइम फॉर द रिक्वायर्ड फॉर क्वालिफिकेशन इज ऑफ द ऑर्डर ऑफ 10 टू द पावर 7 एंड 10 टू द पावर 8 इयर्स नाउ डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द परसेंटेज ऑफ कार्बन द वुड कैन बी क्लासिफाइड और द फ्यूल कैन बी क्लासिफाइड एज और द कोल रादर कैन बी क्लासिफाइड एज स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम वुड व्हिच कंटेन्स अबाउट 50% ऑफ द कार्बन this is the calorific value and the application is it can be used in the as domestic fuel and the lowest grade of coal is the peat which contain around 50 to 60 percent of the carbon and it is used if the high there is deficiency of the high ranking coal. 
Next is the lignite which contains around 6 to 70 percent of carbon. Then the higher quality is bituminous which contain around 80 to 90 and it is used for making coal gas and for the metallurgical coke. And finally, the highest quality of coal which is anthracite which contains around 90 to 98 percent of carbon and it is used in the household and for the steam raising. It is used in the industry for the steam generation. Now, coming to the analysis of coal. Now, this analysis it is helpful in giving the ranking to the coal and the assessment of the quality of coal it is done by two types of analysis and the two types of analysis are the proximate and the ultimate analysis. Proximate analysis so because in this analysis the percentage of carbon is indirectly determined and it consists of the following parameters that is the moisture content can be determined, volatile matter content, then ash content and finally we can calculate the fixed carbon which is present in the coal. So, coming first to the moisture content, for calculation of moisture content around 1 gram of finely powdered air dried coal sample it is taken and it is weighed in a crucible. Now, this crucible it is kept inside the electric hot air oven and it is maintained at a temperature of around 105 to 110 degree centigrade for 1 hour so that the coal loses moisture and this crucible it is taken out. It is kept in the oven for around 1 hour and then it is taken out and it is kept in the desiccator for cooling and weighed. Now, this process is continued till we get two consecutive weight loss, two consecutive same weights if we get then the loss in weight it is reported as moisture. So, the percentage of moisture we can calculate now as the loss in weight divided by the weight of the coal which we had taken multiplied by and moisture you know higher is the quantity of moisture lower is the calorific value of the coal. So, the moisture content in the coal should be less. Coming to the volatile matter. Now, the here we take the coal which has from which the moisture content has been removed. So, the dried sample it is taken in a crucible and it is covered with a lid and then it is placed inside an electric furnace or the muffle furnace and the temperature is maintained around 925 plus minus 20 degrees centigrade and the process is run for exactly 7 minutes. After 7 minutes the crucible is taken out, it is first cooled with the air and then kept inside the desiccator and now the weight loss which is going to happen it is reported as volatile matter on percentage basis. So, the percentage of volatile matter will be given as loss in weight divided by the weight of coal taken multiplied by 100. Last third one is the ash content. Now, the coal it is the residue which is left after the entire coal has burned. So, the residual coal sample it is taken in a crucible and then it is heated without lid in a muffle furnace at around 700 plus minus 50 degree centigrade for half an hour. The crucible is taken out from the muffle furnace, it is cooled in the air and then in the desiccator and weighed. Now, the heating, cooling and weighing they are repeated till the constant weight is obtained and the residue it is reported as ash on percentage basis. So, the percentage of ash we can calculate the weight of the residue or the ash which is left divided by the weight of coal taken multiplied by 100. Generally, now higher is the ash content, lower is the calorific value of the fuel. So, the ash content should also be low in the coal sample. Next is the fixed carbon. 
Now, the percentage of fixed carbon it is calculated as 100 minus percentage of moisture plus volatile matter plus ash. Adding these 3 and subtracting them from 100 will give us the value of fixed carbon. Now, coming to the significance of proximate analysis. Now, the proximate analysis it provides some valuable information in assessing the quality of the coal. So, first coming to moisture. Moisture in coal evaporates during the burning of coals and it takes some of the liberated heat in the form of latent heat of evaporation. Therefore, moisture it lowers the effective calorific value of coal. Moreover, it quenches the fire in the furnace and hence lesser the moisture content better is the quality of coal as fuel. However, the presence of moisture up to 10 percent it produces a more uniform fuel bed and less of fly ash. Now, the second is the volatile matter. Now, a high volatile matter content means that a high proportion of fuel will be distilled over a gas or vapor. It is going to get distilled over as gas or vapor and the large proportion of which will escape unburnt. So, higher is the volatile matter content in the coal, lower is going to be the calorific value and the coal will burn with a long flame, high smoke and it, the calorific value obviously will be low. And hence, the lesser the volatile matter, better the rank of the coal. Next is the ash. Now, ash is useless and it is non-combustible matter and again it is going to reduce the calorific value of coal. Now, this cash, sorry, ash it also causes the hindrance to the flow of air and heat and thus they lower the temperature. So, they also cause trouble during the firing by forming clinkers which blocks the interspaces of the grate on which the coal is being burned. As a result, lower is going to be the ash content, higher the or better is the quality of the coal. And the presence of coal or sorry ash, it also increases the transportation, handling and storage costs. And again, the ash disposal is also a problem. So, a cost addition has to be done for its disposal. And the presence of ash it also causes early wear of the furnace walls by burn the burning of the apparatus and feeding mechanism. Last is the fixed carbon. Now, higher is the percentage of fixed carbon, greater is the calorific value and better is the quality of the coal. Greater is the percentage of fixed carbon, smaller is the percentage of volatile matter and this also represents the quantity of coal that can be burnt by a primary current of air drawn through the hot bed of a fuel. Therefore, hence the high percentage of fixed carbon is desirable. The percentage of fixed carbon helps in designing the furnace and the shape of the firebox because it is the fixed carbon which is going to get burned in the solid state. Thank you.